Hello, everybody. Welcome to Fruitful Trees, and check this out. This is a uh, star fruit, and there's so many other fruit trees here, and you would think, what's so special about that? But look, it's in a pot. And this whole place that I'm at today is a bunch of fruit trees in pots because I'm at a, a house, backyard, nursery where this guy is selling these fruits and growing them up and has hard-to-find fruit trees growing in pots. If you don't want to wait forever to have a fruit tree, you want to contact this, this guy because contact this guy because he has amazing selection. We're going to check it out today, what he has. His contact information below the video. You definitely want to, uh, to check him out and what he has in his inventory. He has great stuff. And he also has sales on his website often. So keep in touch with him because sometimes he might have more of a tree than uh, he wants or needs and he might put them on sale. I've seen several sales already in his inventory. So definitely check it out if you're looking for a good deal. He knows what he's doing with these trees. Here he goes now. Check it out. All right, everybody, check this driveway out. Today, I'm at these trees here in uh, South these, Florida. These fruit trees. I these fruit trees. Because there's a these trees. Oh, is there? Yeah, so make sure you say these All fruit right. trees. All right, everybody, check this out here. Look at this driveway here. Today, I'm at these fruit trees in South Florida. I'm going to put the website below the video. And here's D. How hey, you doing, how you man? Guys doing welcome, welcome. Thank you for coming, Paul. Well, thanks for having us. I love seeing all these uh, trees here. There's a yeah. ton of trees in pots, a whole bunch of different sizes. Now you're wholesale, retail. You do everything. You I say. do everything. Plant brokering. Uh, we do a lot of delivering, uh, and we really specialize in installation of fruit trees, fruit tree groves, um, somewhat little fruit forest for people, uh, especially helping all the the new recently transplants to South Florida who have. Um, happily bought homes down here recently and they're super excited to get some nice fruit trees and quality fruit trees in the yard and a lot of people they want to kind of skip skip the line and skip some time and they like these big ones so you got like for instance we do a lot of these this is these are glens this is 65 gallon this is this one's not rooted in yet this is a hundred gallon there's another hundred gallon glen right there um, okay so let's slow down a second tell uh, us how long you been doing this well I started this in my backyard about four years ago maybe four and a half years ago, I built power lines for 17 years. And every year we just got a little bit busier. So I actually don't build power lines anymore. And now I'm doing this full time. We're doing uh, installations and groves and, and doing some brokering. And deliver as well. The delivery, we just, we just did um, half a dozen deliveries over to the Fort Myers, Pine Island area. And uh, we did some, actually some deliveries up to Orlando last week. So you have a lot of trees here. We're going to see it in your property. Where do you get a lot of these trees? Well, a lot of different growers uh, down in South Florida. Of course, I would say 99% of my mangoes are coming from Zill. And um, he has the most beautiful trees, I think. He really has got it dialed in. Nice guy too. But, you know, I've got a, for my coconuts, I got a guy who's studied out in Hawaii. He's got the Fijis. So we're getting the Fijis from him in smaller pots and growing them out. And um, there's some other local growers here for some of the wholesale, for the Kohala longans and BQ longans and all that kind of stuff. Amazing, amazing. So of everything you sell, which we're going to see today, is there anything you stayed away from or you don't sell that you just don't have? Well, I'm limited on space, so there are some things I don't like to grow off the top of my head just because it's not because it's a bad tree or – or they're not hard or they're hard to grow it would be maybe even the opposite it would just be because there's just not a lot of volume or asking for that so um, those trees maybe like a wax jamboo or melee apple and some of the more obscure varieties of stuff just because the volume would be down okay well we're gonna take a look today so here's an example you said that's a 65 gallon uh, Glen yeah tree here believe it or not this was a nice 25 gallon about a year and a quarter ago and we potted it up. Um, it's almost time to really get installed somewhere, or we're gonna probably gonna have to refertilize here. But we'll hold off on the fertilizer for now until we can maybe get to get it to flower. If we fertilize now, it might um, keep it from flowering. Now, how realistically can somebody get along away with doing something like this in their own personal yard if they don't have space and they want to grow a mango tree? In a big pot like well, this. Well, they, they can easily do it. And the squatter pots are nice. They're a little more expensive, but they're shorter and wider, so they don't tip over as easy. But you definitely want to be very cognizant on the variety of tree you choose. You, I wouldn't recommend doing a glen tree, but 
you know, there's some others, rosy golds, pickerings, julies. To walk the more dwarf trees. Yeah, the more dwarf trees, uh, you can definitely do it. I would say there's going to be a point, though, that you're going to have to remove from the pot and maybe shave shave the root ball down and then and, re and put some new soil in the bottom and put some fertilizer. I've never, you know, I don't have the experience with doing it for years and years, but I know you could get a good half dozen years doing it. Now, do you get fruit on these trees? All... We have fruit on three gallons. It really doesn't matter the size of the tree. They're grafted. But when they start producing good amounts of fruit, you're looking you're looking at like a 45-gallon or up, 65-gallon, something like that. You, you should get a decent crop of fruit. But not always. You never know. Well, I'm excited to see everything you got. Like, here's a 100-gallon, uh, Glenn. And so how far from that 65 to this 100-gallon, how long apart are these trees and growing size? Honestly, they're, they're about the same size right now this has just got a little bit more branching a little more bushiness this this one will fill out real soon uh matter of fact if we fertilize again it'll probably catch right up to it now if somebody was doing it themselves would you recommend tipping the top or like for their own yard or would you just let it grow as tall as it can well these these have all been tip pruned um i can show you some examples possibly in here if you look closely this tree was cut right here and then you can see, so the branch and split. And what I like, to do, um, I like my trees. I like them bushy. I like them shorter. I want people to be able to reach the fruit. I don't like those tall, stretched out trees. I kind of got a rule of thumb, 18 inches, which is about three hand, three hand lengths of a branch. So if I was to come here and look at this branch, I see it branched here. So I go one, two, three. If this doesn't branch or if I want to promote it, I'll cut it right here. And then... That way the branch never gets too long and out of control on you. Sure. And when do you do that? Uh, at any time or just during the Well, right because time? I'm not I'm not growing for fruit. I'm growing for tree structure and tree strength and, and the overall look of the tree. I do it all year long, 12 months out of the year. These trees are going to grow for me all year, the mangoes here. You know. But, but if, if you you're do doing it, it for fruit, you, you want to kind of do your pruning right after you harvest. And you got to kind of figure out... The, the rate of growth for each tree you, you have, if you want to keep the tree about the same size. You don't want to cut too much. You don't want to cut too little. Got Every it. tree is going to be different. All right now, so here's a quick question. So if you're do, doing it for fruit and you, you let, if it goes past three hand lanes, let's mm -hmm. say, let's say it goes to six hand lanes, mm -hmm. but you're waiting for the fruit, you get the fruit, and then can you cut it back, Absolutely. back to three? Sure. Okay. As long as you got a strong, healthy tree. You can definitely. But if you're doing it for fruit, just cut right after you harvest. Right Don't after you harvest, kind of get an estimate about how much you think that tree is going to grow up until the time it flowers. Because once it goes into flowering, generally the growing stage is going to stop. It's going to go into flowering, fruit production, hopefully, and it's not going to be growing. And you kind of repeat the process every year. You keep the tree the same size. That's how the groves do it. Great. It's great. So when you cut it, you can go back. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so I know you have a lot of trees we're going to look around, but I'm really excited to see your coconuts because you have Fiji coconuts here. Yeah, that's, it's become my favorite tree. The way they look, the amount of fruit they produce, you literally picking coconuts off the ground. Unfortunately, I don't have any coconuts here right now, uh, as far as the fruit goes, but we have the trees yeah, and you can see a few different examples, different sizes. We've got some nice field growing ones here. And, uh, and you have yeah, some happy for sale this. also. You yeah, some we've got some in 45 ground. gallon. Uh, that are available. We sold a lot of the smaller ones, but we do have some really nice perfect specimens 45 gallon Great isolated feet. And how often do you have those available? Uh, once or twice a year. Okay. Yeah, they they're kind of hard to come by All right, so show us around how much how much land do you have here? We're About three quarters of an acre here. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Look at all this. These are all in pots so realistically according to a D here uh, for about maybe six or seven years, if you're doing this for your own personal collection, you'd be able to get away with something like this. But eventually, they should go in the ground, unless it's a dwarf, a, dwarf a super tree. dwarf tree. Uh, these these are, for instance, Namdok my number fours. Uh, I really like the way these trees grow for someone looking for a dwarf tree. Um, you now these trees are probably five years old already. They've got a good two and a half inch caliper on them. They're about uh, five and a half feet tall planted out right now. I've got a few of them. These are actually going out um, next week. Somebody picked these up already. And they're using cloth pots here as well. These ones are in cloth. We've got a mixture. Some of these, uh, it was a little hard to get pots at some point this year. So did the cloth, did the roots ever break the cloth or not necessarily? No. Uh, the coconuts will. 
not okay. not a mango. The coconuts are very very strong. Those those are. And there are some smaller ones you have here that you, uh, that are going out, or or you well, might not. No, pop these them. these actually Zill just dropped off a few trees, so this is we haven't brought these to the back yet. These got to do some serious growing. All right. So how long before those grow uh, to a decent size? I wouldn't. I would probably wouldn't even try to pot these up for like three months and then I'll put them in the seven gallon. And then, you know, maybe three months after that, they'll be rooted in a seven gallon. In so, your opinion, do trees always do better in the ground than in a pot? Most trees, yes, especially mango. Uh, there's just, there's just um, something about Mother Earth and there's always the right amount of water in the ground that I just feel like, especially mango, you're always trying to, we're always trying to repeat what Mother Earth is offering, and we it, it's very hard to do. And there's some guys who are amazing at it. I'm learning every day. So um, some like these, if somebody was to buy something this size, would you recommend them get it in the ground as soon as possible, or would you recommend them grow it up to this, a decent size? This is a little too small for the ground, in my opinion. I, I, I would, I wouldn't plant something in the ground unless it's about my hip height. That's, okay. that's you know someone's gonna run this over with a lawnmower just to start well, with. Well, I'm not talking about the lawnmower if yeah. in this space. Even then, it's 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 a little small. It it could grow, but you'd have to watch a little more. You know, keep an eye on it with the fungicides and stuff like that. I, I think um, leaving it in the container for a little bit longer is a little bit better idea. A good size three is a great tree to plant. You know, honestly, they'll grow quickly if you do everything right. You know, sometimes people do too much, too much watering. Actually, sometimes less is best. Yeah, and here we are. This is a. Uh... This is a Valencia Pride. Oh, that's a big tree. And this is the, probably the biggest growing tree, one of them. Yep. And, and here it is in a pot. Oh, it's at a 65 gallon. That's a 65. Matter of fact, we planted one this size at the beginning of the pandemic in the middle of the street. You can see it there. And it, that's only two years of growth. Wow. Behind that tree receives no water. It's in the middle of the road. And it just looks beautiful. I only had to spray it one time ever for mites. No water. Nothing. Just just what God God gives it. And how often do you water these trees in the pots? Your mangoes, we don't water a lot. We're we're down to once every five days, maybe, especially now that the temperatures are down. Um, we use a real dry mix, a lot of sand, and very little peat. A lot of a lot of uh, wood chips. You can use um, maluca or pine bark or whatever various chips you like. Um, but yeah, it's at least a 55% mix of chip, wood chips just for good aeration and drainage. All right. And so, so there's no fruit in these now, but to something like this fruit during the season? Well, the Namdok Mize are knowing to fruit a couple times a year. This one's actually throwing out an off-season flower right now. Yeah. And uh, it's all rosy gold over there that's maybe throwing a little fruit. But I assume in sometime mid to late February, it's going to be a pretty cool place to visit. There's going to be a... Depending on what trees are still here, especially some of these big ones, I'd like to see what fruit's hanging on them. Nice, nice. Yeah. All right, and there's breadfruit, right? Yeah, this is a breadfruit. We're uh, got a couple branches left to. We use this one for a little bit of propagation. We're doing air layering. A little there. bit of air layering. I feel it getting a little hard up here. So the, I believe the rooting starting down here. It's not ready. We got one more there. I'll have to check on. So how how old is this breadfruit tree? They grow fast, so. This tree, this tree would be a lot bigger if it was in the ground. It's kind of staying small because it is in a pot. It's a 65 gallon. Um, this breadfruit is about three years old from an air layer. And how long before they fruit? Right away. Uh, usually about a year and a half to two years till they actually hold the fruit. But they'll flower and fruit right away. It's an air layer. So now, do air layers on breadfruit grow better than the grafted, or not necessarily any different? Or you don't know? Well, they're in the artocarpus. They have an amazing root system. So the, the air layers are super fast. They fill the pots up really quick. Um, they do great in the ground. Uh, they're, you know, you, I like to plant them on a protected side of the house, depending on where you're at because of the, uh, because of the cold. I notice anything under 45, you're going to start getting damage on the wood and the, the leaves. So. And how does the fruit grow in South Florida, the red fruit? There's a lot of fruiting trees in this neighborhood that are old. So there's even – this tree doesn't get as big as some of the other ones. This is the one from – I believe it's from outside of Tonga, somewhere in Fiji. 
but uh, it's called the maafala, from what I've been told, and it's a it's a more of a wide growing breadfruit than a tall breadfruit. But my neighbor has one that's probably sixty feet tall here, and I see fruit on it every year. Wow, does he he, he eats it? Yeah, yeah, yeah he does. I don't think he wow. I don't think he eats the ones that are sixty feet in the air, but he eats the ones he can reach. Wow. <laughs> all right, so this is all his driveway. This is just yeah. a driveway here at these fruit trees. Yeah. Uh, and absolutely amazing. So he even has little coconuts in pots here. Uh, this, uh, this one isn't a Fiji one. We're going to no, see this, that in the back. One, but this one actually is a small Fiji. Oh, it is. Wow. Yeah, yeah this oh, is wow. a small Fiji. Um, we just potted this one up. The well, one the one behind, behind it, that, that's a big one. That's not a Fiji. That's right? not a Fiji. That's a red spicata. But this tree is a dwarf. This actually is a small, slow-growing tree. It grows a small little nut. Um, the more pure they are, the, the darker red these trees and nuts will be. And they'll, I've seen some of them that almost look like tangerines. They're small coconuts. They're real sweet. If you're limited on space, these are a good one to plant. They're slow growing. I definitely like the Fiji's, but the Fiji's are a, a husky tree. This is kind of a more slender tree, so be less invasive in your area, like for your space-wise. Wow. Okay. And how tall do they grow? I mean, much taller than well, you say that. Well, never. Yeah. Basically, dwarf means they grow slower. Um, yeah. What really makes the Fiji's dwarf is once they get into nut production, the trees really concentrate on growing the nuts, not the tree. So that's why they just grow really, really slow. And I'll show you some examples of the larger ones. Every time the branch grows, you're going to see the growth line, the branch grows less. So it's, it's really, really close. I'll give you an example of that. But like if you see a Malayan, for instance, every time the branch grows, it grows about that much. And some of the May pants and stuff like that are, or even larger, kind of like a Valencia, the nodes on it, every time it grows, you get a one this long versus an ice cream mango, it's this long. Wow. Yeah. All righty. So we continue here and just look, he has a bunch of jabos here of different types. This, this is this a one, Sabra. This is a Sabra. It even has fruit on there, flowering and fruit. This one had some big fruit, but my, um, my little kids, they find the fruit. And, so tell us about this. So what's that, a 65 gallon? Mm-hmm. And how old is this This here? I couldn't honestly tell you. I um, I bought this from someone who has been growing it for a while. So I would guess it's fairly old, though, because I've grown some Jabos out for a while, and it's hard to get them. To, these Sabras, they take a long time to fruit. And then there's one back there. What's that one? That's another Sabra. That's even a bigger one. That one I haven't seen fruit on yet, though. Wow, see it's bigger but no fruit yet, yeah. so soon no. And so you have a lot of Jabos for sale, different sizes, right? We we do always have Jabos. We sold a lot of Jabos recently. I think we just might have sold out a red Jabbity Cabas this morning. Someone, uh, we had a wholesale order come in. But we have plenty of large Sabras available. And we've got some big Grimmels available still. I've got some Blues. And now, on your website, you have a, a list of your current inventory. How often do you update that? I keep a, a PDF of my available list, and if you just ask me for it, I'll just send it to you. Okay. It's available. has let, all the prices, everything. Let me there. ask you this here. So, there are these uh, trees here. That's a fruit punch, a great mango. Mm -hmm. So, if somebody gets one like this, mm -hmm. at this size, you see, there it is in the pot. Not for a reselling reason, but just for their personal yard. Would you get something like that in the ground now, or would you cut it and let it grow in the pot? Like, what would you do with something like that? If it was your own personal. This one wouldn't matter. You could put it right in the ground. Like I said, right about the the hip height, I think is a a good height. You can plant them. But and even if you get it in the ground, would you cut it back, or would you just keep letting it grow? Or well, these you're gonna have to cut more than likely. So I usually like to cut it right at my hip. When you plant this, this is gonna go 12 inches shallower so i might let it get one more growth and then cut it unless you want something really really short you could you could tip all these now you'll see i've got some examples of one we we've, we've been doing some tipping on over here wonderful okay and look at his yard everybody this this is amazing it's like a forest here it's truly a forest <laughs> there's all kinds of weird stuff growing in the middle there you see some grafted mamey apples red geffners um you never know you just got to look around i don't have a lot of space so i have to just kind of accommodate right yeah so and like i said we i mean we've got 65 gallon sabras and i've got i mean i even have a few plugs left we had a couple dozen trays 
you know, we've got, if you, if you don't mind waiting. <laughs> How long before something like that would have fruit on it? I would say seven to 14 years. Okay. Yeah. Seven to 14 years. And you planted those from seed? No, those I got from a guy who did them from seed. I bought the liners. I bought them in a 72 tray. These are now in the, um, these are in a 30, I think 32 tray. But so technically anyone that has room for a tree and gets the fruit, they can seed them that way themselves if they really wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could save a lot of money. That's for sure. You just gotta, you just gotta take the time. Yeah. I recommend, honestly, I think Jabati Cobb is one of the best trees, especially for limited spaced home growers. Uh, the red one fruits almost all year. Once they get big enough, you can grow those in containers for the rest of your life. The sabras, they just grow so slow. I mean, they can become a large tree. I've never really seen a huge tree here, although I've heard of them. Um, but I just think those are a great tree. Need irrigation, though. They like a lot of water. They like a lot of water. Like a lot of water and a good mulch. And What else likes water? Because I know... Uh, mangoes in my farm, I don't have irrigation on them. They do fine, yeah. the ones that are in the ground. Definitely don't want to have irrigation on any mango you ever plant. I think you water it a couple times when you first plant it, and then after that, you never water it again. That's I've always seen the get the best results with mangoes. Some trees, from what I've heard, like I said, I'm not into the fruit growing business, but you know, if, if you got a good a good bunch of fruit on a tree, I've heard if you can water them, besides a mango, it will help to hold the fruit. I've also heard a little give it iron that helps to hold the fruit, some chelated sure. iron. Uh, what else likes water? Pomegranate love water. Guavas love water. Uh, what about like custard apples and uh, sugar apples? Once they're established. No, no. From what I've seen, the sugar apples don't like a lot of water. I think custard apples are a little more um, hardy to it, but they definitely don't need irrigation either. I've got some friends growing a lot of custard apples and – he definitely doesn't have irrigation. He gets a lot of fruit, more than more than most people. Um, and he's actually got some seedlings that have come out better than some of the grafted varieties. Wow. So maybe maybe one day he'll 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 help us out with that. <laughs> All right, look at this. This is uh, amazing. So they have different size of everything here, and you make this self available uh, 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 again. If you contact him at his website, tell us your website. I'll put it below the link below. It would be dsfruittreesllc.com. DSFruitTreesLLC.com. I'll put the link below, but somebody in South Florida can contact you, see if you got what they want. You'll send them a list. And mm -hmm. if they're locally, they can pick it up or no? Yeah, you can come by. You can pick it up. We're happy to show you around. Um, we end up having a lot of discussions on what's the best for that particular person's yard. Are they on vacation a certain month out of the summer? Because if people don't think about that. They'll plant a, a mango that's ripe in July every year, and they're never here in July. So those are, you know, little things like that. You know, we, we like to talk to the people and, and kind of help them out so they can be successful. Now, do you have a delivery fee or it depends on what they're ordering and where they are? Yeah, we're, we're a small business. So if it's far, there is a delivery fee. But uh, my neighbors, no. And sure. uh, it all depends where you are and what you're ordering. We're always open to a good negotiation. Great, great. <laughs> and I see here a jujube in the pot. Yeah. Uh, and I have a jujube growing in a pot as well. So tell us about this here. Do you, do you sell a lot of jujubes? I don't sell a lot because I don't get a lot of jujube trees. But if I had more, I would probably sell more. It's yeah. been a hard tree for me to get. But this one actually sold this morning. Somebody ordered it. Another, another landscape company. So what size is this? That is newly potted in 45 gallon. It definitely is not rooted. Um, and I did tell them it's not rooted, so they're gonna they're gonna take it because it is a hard tree for the, for them to get around here right now, and they're gonna grow it out a little bit more themselves. So how much would a tree like this cost? Um, well, dip typically forty five gallon. If this was fully rooted retail, all my forty five gallons are four hundred and forty dollars. Okay, so in roughly in a range. Correct me if I'm wrong, except for special things like maybe Jabba di Cabos, Jabos and, and Fiji uh, coconuts. The things that are hard to find. For most other things, it's usually within a ten dollars per the, gallon of the pot. Yeah, yeah. yeah mm -hmm. Unless I know there's Somewhere some special around there, things. I'm usually a little bit less. Now I do notice on your site, and I, well, I appreciate that you're doing this out of your house, so you can charge less. You don't have a nursery fee to pay. Mm -hmm. But I, I do notice, like on your site, you put some things on sale as well. Mm -hmm. so yeah, that's pretty cool. So people yep. should check often when they contact you. They, we do right now. We're we are doing um wholesale pricing on 65 gallon mangoes for retail customers as nice. i do have that offer going on right now and we had a bunch of seven gallons we were selling at wholesale as well actually they were actually below wholesale we we're selling them at 35 but we pretty much blew them all out now so there nice. might be one or two left but i don't think so 
Nice. So here we are in uh, so I want to talk a little bit more about this jujube tree because it's growing in the pot. The, and so you just upsized it from what size? This was in the 25 gallon. And in the 25 gallon, how often were you, were you watering it? And when did this, this is the first time it fruited? This is the first time it fruited, yo. Mm -hmm. This one, um, this gets daily irrigation. Pretty much everything but a mango gets daily irrigation here. And how is that? Because I'm looking at the pots. I know this one's about to go because you just mm -hmm. sold it. But do you have, how do you run irrigation to the pots? Well, we have a well here, but honestly, where everything's on a, on a, on a really, it's like a large one inch, one diameter hose. And my main man over here, who's here with me five days a week, he, he checks everything. Matter of fact, what we do for the mangoes is he just kind of feels in here. He goes about an inch in the pot. And if it's moist, we don't water. If it's a little dry, then he'll put water, which right now is about every five days. That's with the mangoes or everything? That's with the mangoes. Yeah. Pretty much everything else is on daily watering. Hand watering or? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And here's Miracle Fruit. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's, that's great. Do you sell many of these? Not too many, but we had about 20 this year, and this is the last one. So there's one tree a lot of people are looking for that's really hard to find right now, persimmon. Do you have any persimmons? We had a bunch of them, but nope, we don't have any of those either. We'd love to have some Triumph persimmons. Yeah, they're great. So here's, yeah. uh, here's a Mamey tree in a pot. Look at that. Uh, that's 65? That's a 45. 45. Yeah. And it's a uh, Mamey flowers here on there. What kind of tree is this? This is the Pantene. Pantene, also known as Key West. Mm -hmm. Wow. This is the one we mostly grow is the Pantene. I sometimes do Magania or Pace, um, but really I like to just grow the Pantene. Now, why is that? You know, the Maganias um, are a good fruit and they fruit e way more easy and they're an easier tree to grow and get started initially. But, and I know some people might say it's not true, but I've had complaints that, of uneven ripening of the fruit because it's a large fruit and maybe they don't give it the right amount of time. The, and I just think the fruit quality on a, a real deal Key West is superior too. And uh, what about this watering in this pot here? How long have you had this tree, this particular tree? Uh, we bought all these mamays and they were in 15 gallon about a year and a half ago, a year ago. Now the mamays, they need, grow fast. They need a lot of water to mamays. Yeah, I know. They need water, but they need to dry out in between the watering. If if you wa if you water them a may too much, that's a death sentence for sure. Leaving this in a pot, how often do you water it? Or do you yeah, right now every other day? Okay. Yeah, and and we've actually been getting quite a bit of rain lately. So it rained last night. We don't we're not gonna water anything today. Now I know you don't have the same issue as people that have fruit growing on their trees, but how do you deal with pests in this area? Any, anything on these potted trees? They don't really mess too much with the potted trees unless you leave the fruit on there too long. But my Key West Mame in the back, that's about 30 foot tall. Let's that one down. has been ravaged by uh, pests. And it's it's almost impossible to get a fruit because it takes so long to, to bear. There's a seven acre preserve behind us of just woodland. Okay. So there's a lot of raccoons and squirrels and rats that enjoy the fruit. Now, what about... It looks like a very quiet neighborhood here, uh, and you've got a lot of trees, pots everywhere. Mm -hmm. Ever any problems with theft or no? No. Okay. Not here. Mm -mm. Okay. And uh, very cool. Yep. And so look look at this, everybody. Look at all these trees. This, and this is at his house in his backyard. I mean, the yard looks to me bigger than uh, three quarters of an acre, but, you know, that you know could be perception because they got all these trees here. But wow. Yeah. Wow. And these are some of the Fijis. Like I said, these are some of these are the 45 gallons. It, I mean, these are the real deal dwarf coconut. It, it's definitely worth, in my opinion, the extra money because the Malayans at some point are just going to get totally out of range. And these will just go really, really slow. And not only that, they're, they're just when they grow bigger, they're really cool looking. Yeah, we're going to see two that are in the ground right now. But uh, so that's the real deal there. That's the coconuts you want. Uh, and. They stay low to the ground. We're going to check it out and see that. We got some coffee bean right here. This is the Arabica. Coffee bean. Wow. Mm -hmm. Those are fun. To now grow. there's a fruit. It's a fruit. Mm -hmm. So I know they have like a kind of a, to me, a little sweet chocolatey uh, coffee taste. This is my first time I'm going to try it. And now the don't eat the bean. That's the coffee bean. Mm -hmm. I don't do coffee. So let's try the fruit the first time. Interesting. I mean, it's nothing to fill up on, but, um, 
Every time I walk by, I grab a little bean. I don't know. That's very cool. Very cool. Is there mm -hmm. caffeine in the bean in the in the fruit? <laughs> I don't know. I I think it would be so little amount that it you wouldn't know. And the honestly. beans, are, that's where they get coffee from. Yep. Yeah. So what about uh, cacao? Do you, do you have cacao? Not many, but I do have a few in the back. We I got an orange sherbet mango back there that we grow them under, and those we actually never water. Those just live in a pot on the rain. I noticed when we watered them, they didn't do anywhere near as well. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you are using the, the ones that are here long term in the pots, you are fertilizing or as you upsize or, or not? I have to, for sure. Um, it, it's just kind of hard to find time to do foliar feeds. I've attempted to do it several times. It works great. I like the Peters, but I, I yeah, every time I pot up, I, I like to use a, a really good quality time release brand like Floricam. Um, you want to be careful of something that's like a three month release, you want something more of a six or a nine month. I actually use a nine month release on mine. And yeah, last year I learned a lesson when it was during the pandemic and we couldn't even, we couldn't buy that kind of fertilizer and had to use the regular fertilizer. And we burned a few trees like that. We saw black around here, like a black ring, and then it would just drop the leaf. And they came out of it, you know, they're in a pot. You can kind of get the, the extra salts out quick, but there was damage. You know, what definitely. about trees in the ground? Some of them you fertilize and some you don't? You know, usually I fertilize them. This year, I didn't throw any fertilizer on any of the trees. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what about avocados? What do you, you got a lot of avocados, a lot of variety? We do have quite a few varieties. I'll show them to you. All right. This place is amazing. Everybody look for fruit, fruit trees. I'm happy to introduce another place. I'll to tell you, you what, though, besides avocado, trees. this is one of the classics. This is Edward. I know it's got a bad rap about not producing a lot of fruit, but it really is one of the best mangoes. And what size Edward is that? This is a 45 gallon. We've got a bigger one over there that's even nicer in 45. 45 gallon Edward. Yeah, it, I mean, if you got the room and you got a few varieties, I recommend an Edward. It's super disease free, grows great, and the fruit is just amazing. But these are Catalinas. This is 45 gallon Catalina. Wow, wow, there we go, Catalina. That's excellent, excellent. Yeah, this is a Catalina here. Now you could technically keep these small in the pot or not, just like you said earlier. Some maybe. of them, I think the Catalinas, the Catalinas have a, a slower growth and they definitely fruited a lot this year in the pot, these 45s. They were, they were full of fruit. Some of them had eight or 10 fruit on them. Wow. I just don't know about how long term you could go with it, but you can definitely get quite a few years out of it. Catalina is excellent. Okay, what else do you got there? More Catalinas. This is Choquette. I haven't been quite sold on the quality of Choquette yet. I hear it's really good. It's a winter variety. You can have it for the new year. But um, I haven't had a great one personally. Got a few Super Haas left. This is 15 gallons. Some newly potted 25s. More Catalina in 25. And these are, these are the Russells. This is a good one. This is a later summer variety. It's nice to have. I think this personally, this is the best early summer. These are Simmons and 25 gallon. I really like the, they're, I think they're really creamy, really good. Some, more, some of these Catalinas are getting really big for 25. More Russells. And in the very back, I got some Oro Negros. I was just going to ask you if you had Oro Negro. Not, I got some seven gallons up front and um, not too many left, but I want to put these in 45 at some point. They, this one's starting to juice Now, have you tasted your Negro? It's the best avocado I ever best, had in my life. Best avocado. I'm in agreement I mean, with I you. I almost ruined it just by putting olive oil because it was always so oily and rich. It was it, it, no comparison. I've never had an I, avocado I that I completely good. agree. I just took some off my tree now and Unbelievable. it's amazing. It's, in, it's incredible. But the Catalinas and Simmons are good too, but this is definitely better. But this is ripe in the winter and yeah. then your Catalinas and, and your oh, Simmons yeah. are in yeah. the summer, so you can space that a little bit. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so what size is this here? These are 25s. 25 or Negros. Mm -hmm. And how much are those? Uh, we're doing those at 250. 250. Definitely worth it, everybody. This is an Abbey U. Abbey U. Wow, that's a big one. Yeah, that one's starting to get. You know, but these were really small 12 months ago. I think Any I fruit them on them? Year. No, I've never personally had one with fruit in a pot. I've never seen it yet. Wow. And these, we got to, we're trying to grow out. These are all butterscotch. Wow. Look at that, everybody. Butterscotch and sapodillas. That's amazing. Yeah. And there's the cacaos right behind you underneath this orange sherbet. Oh, where? There. Yeah, okay. Right there. There's a, only a couple of them. Right? There's some cacaos. We, we, we don't have a lot of them. I have maybe a half dozen. But this is, you got a bunch of butterscotch here. And these are for sale? No. 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 I don't, I don't know what I want to do with them yet. 
All right. At this some is, point, they'll probably will sell. This is probably the most sort of uh, trees around now that's hard to find that people are wanting. Uh, they're worth the money if you if you can get one. Butterscotch sample beer. All right. Yeah, it's kind of hard to navigate through here. Ah, oh, this is great. This is like a dream. This is wonderful. Got all these avocado trees. Yeah. You and you did this four years now that you've been doing this. Yeah, they were, I mean, four years ago, it started right behind, right in front of that shed. I had a few pieces of plywood and I'd say 25, three gallons in a Craigslist ad. And, and now then, you're keeping this, what is this, just a grow mat? Yeah, just a, you know, a nice thick mat. I actually need to, read and, read and need to redo it, but. Why? Because the weeds eventually come through? Well, it was kind of done in a rush. It it could be done better. Did the weeds come through eventually? No, I haven't had an issue with that. Okay. No. I mean, I'm sure at some point they would, but not yet. You know, what we have too is what's really nice. I love them. I think it's one of the best mangoes for anyone to grow, disease-free, easy to grow. The fruit is good quality. It's not the best fruit in the world, but these pickerings, these are, oh, I got a bunch of 45 gallon pickerings that are really nice. And I guarantee, I mean, I would say nine out of 10 of these are going to be loaded with fruit um, exactly. this spring. They fruit so easily and so heavily. Yeah. They, and those could stay in the pot. Those are dwarf trees. Yep. And you know, I like the carries too. The carries are real disease free, you know? Yeah. Let me ask you, I know a, a, a tree that a lot of people don't have, but it's a really great tree. It's a dwarf tree. Ice cream mango. Do you have those? Bunch of them. Uh, ice cream is actually my favorite mango. Yeah, I, I agree. think it's the best it's tasting mango amazing. in the world. I do think if you don't, unless you're right by the coast, if you don't have another mango tree, it shouldn't be the only mango tree you plant because I have heard there are issues with the flowers and fungus. And uh, But we get great fruit set here, but we're, we're a mile from the marina. So, and do you have uh, them in pots or in the ground or what? Everything. Yeah, they're so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got them from three gallon up to 45 gallon right now, but wow. not that many of each. So, because because I'm always telling people how good they are, and that one sells a lot. And the name too sells it, but it's yeah. absolutely amazing. Yeah, this is one a lot of people I don't know if they have. This is an Irwin. Irwin, okay. Yeah, I haven't had that fruit yet. We can show my. We can look at my breadfruit back there. Yeah, we're gonna look at a big breadfruit. I see a star fruit there. What variety? Look at this star fruit in the pot, everybody. Is that a, a carry? Uh, no, we reuse a lot of pots. This is just an arkin. This okay, one, an arkin. Mm -hmm. This is this is also a great sapodilla, honestly. Oh, I think I Silas yeah. Wood is maybe the best, and this is. I haven't eaten a butterscotch yet, so I couldn't tell you. Um, anytime I've had a nice tree with fruit on it, somebody's bought the tree, so I've yet to experience it. I'm sure it's amazing, but I have eaten plenty of Alanos and plenty of Silas Woods. And I, what I do like about those trees is they're dwarf and they don't take up a lot of space and they produce a lot of fruit. And yeah, they're the easiest tree to grow, Sapodillas. They're, they're disease resistant. I hear it makes the best milkshake there is. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. Yeah. This is a little Silas Wood here, 15 gallon. I mean, they're just super dwarf. See how short? And you can leave those in the pot. I think Pretty a Silas well. Wood, you definitely could. Yeah, definitely. Now look, this is a, believe it or not, this breadfruit is only a, wow. a year old wow. from a 25 gallon. Wow. Yeah. I've got a, I think one air layer left. To, still feels a little soft, but I got a bunch of air layers down here. Wow. We so, it in a seven. What's that, a 45 gallon breadfruit? Well, this one's in the ground. This oh, is, my, this is mine okay. for propagation. Okay. okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I see some dragon fruit back there. That one, I, I want to say, is a Haley's Comet. I lucked into that one. We do cuttings and we do pot them up. That, that tree never hand pollinated. It produces fruit three times a year, and there's no fungus on that vine. I've seen a lot of other dragon fruits, and it's sweet. It's good. Not as good as the yellow one, but it's very good. So tell us about jackfruit. Do you have jackfruits? Yeah, we've got a few of them here, not too many. Um, I think this is probably a black gold looking at the leaf and, uh, nice, nice these are probably like an gold. orange crush. Okay. Mm -hmm. And yeah. here's some more of your, is that a Fiji? That's a Fiji as well. Yep. Wow. Show us the ones you have in the ground. Yeah, let's go check them out. I think it's easier if we walk over. Well, we could go right through here. All right. There it is from this location. Look, that's the Fiji right there. There's two of them. There's that. We're going to go around and see the bark here. And then there's that one there. 
All right, so this coconut tree, look how small it is. These are eight years old and they've got about a foot of wood, maybe eight a little more. Mm -hmm. Well, I haven't had them eight years, but they're eight years old. Um, you can see how tight the rings are. You see how short that is? Yeah. And the, and they're really, they're, they're really pronounced. And the, the more this tree's gonna grow, the more you're gonna see that. But every time this tree grows, it's so small. It's about, it's about one inch. It's not much. And they have really tight heads. The leaf, the leaf structure is really tight. You can get no light. You can't, you can't even see through them. Uh, it's just the real deal dwarf tree there is. I got these planted by the pool. And the reason for these, obviously, is to get the seed. I have no other coconuts around me within like a couple hundred feet. So hopefully there's no cross-pollination with another coconut and we get pure, pure Fiji's out of it. Wow, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. And your website again? TheseFruitTreesLLC.com. All right, I'm going to put his contact information, his phone number, his website, and all that information below the video. Definitely, if you're in South Florida, uh, contact him. And if you're in, he'll deliver even to Central Florida if uh, you're ordering something worth his delivery. Yep. Uh, so definitely contact him. This, I'm so glad I discovered this place because this place is uh, very fruitful. <laughs> Thanks a lot for showing us around. Hey, thank you for coming. Real pleasure. All right. All right, everybody, I told you that was so amazing. Uh, regardless of the amazing nursery he has, just to be here in the presence of all these trees uh, was wonderful. And that coconut tree, you know, I wish I lived in a different area where I could have coconuts close to the ground without everybody in the neighbor taking them, in the neighborhood taking them. But if you have a yard, that's the tree you want, those coconut trees. And he's the only one I know that you can trust who has them. And, and what he tells you about the pollinating them and, and make sure they're not too close to other trees and, and all that stuff. He knows what he's doing and he knows and he could show you why these are the real trees. Definitely contact him if you're interested in getting a dwarf Fiji coconut tree and many of the other trees he has here today. I hope you like this as much as I like being here. I'm definitely going to keep in touch with Dee and, and, and do more videos in the future. Uh, but in the meantime, everybody, if you like this video, remember to like and subscribe and put your comments and questions below and contact Dee. He's very helpful and uh, he's on Facebook. He'll answer your, your, your emails and your texts and your DMs and uh, just an amazing place. All right, everybody, have a great day and keep growing.